Hi everyone, in this video we are going to practice performing several different calculations that have to do with heat transfer. So essentially we're going to try to keep calculating different ways of solving for Q or heat, okay? So the first question here is kind of wordy. These, all of these questions are wordy by the way, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, but the first question here is a little bit complicated, so let's go through it slowly here. The temperature of 335 grams of water increases from 24.5 degrees Celsius to 26.4 degrees Celsius. So how much heat did the sample have to absorb in order for this to happen? Given to you is the specific heat of water, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So we're looking for a heat term, okay? Go ahead and take this down or take a quick picture of this before we pause. Okay, go, 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 go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, but if you didn't, that's okay. We're gonna work through it together. So the first thing you need to do was come up with this formula. So you have Q is equal to M times C sub S times delta T. So remember your C sub S is your specific heat that is very unique to whatever property or whatever uh, molecule it is that you're studying. So heat is what we're looking for. Mass is just going to simply be the mass of our water. So 335 grams of water times the specific heat which was given to us, which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then you have your change in temperature, which is final minus initial. So for final, you have 26.4 degrees Celsius minus your initial temperature, which is 24.5 degrees Celsius. And simply all you have to do is put this into your calculator. So 335 times 4.184 times the difference of 26.4 minus 24 points. Five, okay, so if you do that properly, you end up with a heat term that is equal to about 2,663 joules of energy that are absorbed, right? So you see that this is a Q, it's a positive term, so we know that this energy is being absorbed by the water, which makes sense, right? The temperature of the water went up, it definitely had to absorb heat. All right, so let's ramp it up a notch. Much longer problem here, so I'm definitely going to give you time to pause this video or take a picture, however it is that you want to do that. But basically, you have a 26 gram of sample of a metal that is at a temperature of 82.25 degrees Celsius, and it's added to a coffee cup calorimeter. And in this calorimeter, there's already contained some water in about 75 grams of water that is at the temperature of 24. So you have 24 grams sorry, 75 grams of water at 24 degrees Celsius here in the cup. You're adding the piece of metal to it, so it's 26 gram piece of metal here, and then this metal is at 82 degrees Celsius. You throw it in the coffee cup, mix it up. After five minutes, the final temperature of that whole thing, so that water metal mixture now, is now 28.34 degrees Celsius. So we're looking for the specific heat of the metal, okay? Go ahead and try to calculate that. Take your time, watch for that negative sign, all right? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, but if you didn't, please do not get frustrated. I'm gonna move the question up. I know my face is gonna be blocking that, so I really apologize for this, but I do need some space in order to work this out, okay? All right, so what we have here is that we need to realize that the Q of our system is going to be equal to the negative Q of our surrounding, all right? So now our system, we need to pick which one is our system. I'm just going to say that's my metal, and I'm going to say that my surrounding is my water. It literally doesn't matter. You just need to pick one and be consistent because if you start mixing the numbers up, then your math is not gonna work. All right, so let's work on the metal first. So we know we need our mass of our metal, we need our specific heat of our metal, and then we need to get the change in temperature of our metal, and that's going to be equal to the negative of the mass of our water, times the specific heat of our water, times the change in temperature of our water. Now I know I'm being really silly about it, putting the M's and the H2O, but again, you have to be very, very meticulous about this. You cannot mess things up and mix them up. All right, so the mass of our metal. We said that our mass of our metal is 26.0 grams. We're looking for the specific heat of the metal. That's what we're trying to solve for. Now our change of temperature of the metal, it started off at a really, really high temperature, which was 82.25 degrees Celsius. And so remember we do final minus initial, so that's going to be our initial temperature, so we're gonna put that over here, 82.25 degrees Celsius. Now our final temperature, that's what our mixture is here, the water metal mixture, that's our final temperature. So that's going to be our 28.34 degrees Celsius. So now just remember, your change of temperature is always your final temperature minus your initial temperature. You cannot mess that up. I almost did, just you saw me writing that out. And so you just have to make sure you're so meticulous and just be super, super careful when you do this, all right? So final temperature was a 28. Your initial temperature was your 82. Now we're gonna move on to the water. 
we said that there are 75 grams of water. The specific heat of water was given in the previous problem, so we know it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's never going to change. And then our change in temperature, I'm just going to rewrite it down here for, for space, okay? So final minus initial. So the final temperature is going to be the same for both. It is 28.34 degrees Celsius, but we know that our water actually started at 24 degrees Celsius, so we're going to be 28.34 minus our 24 degrees. Celsius. That's a lot. All right. So now hopefully the big thing and I did it. Oh my God, I did it. I dropped my negative sign. You cannot drop that. I was going to say the most important thing is that you make sure you don't drop that metal, that negative sign as you go through. So many people do that and it's such a big problem. So I always check after I put this out before I even go to my calculator, I check, did I drop it? And in this instance, I actually did. So it's very important that you check. Okay. Now, go through, calculate this out, take your time with doing this, all right? So you can go 75 times your four times parentheses 28 minus 24, make sure you have that negative sign in there. Then you're gonna divide out by the 28 minus 82, divide out by your 26, and you're left with your specific heat of your metal. And if you did that properly, you should end up with an answer something like 0 0.971 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now, if I was really evil, I would give you a chart of specific heat to the metal and say, what identify this metal. What is that unknown metal? And you'd be able to go see, look through the chart and find the one that's 0.971 and be like, oh, that's aluminum or oh, that's potassium. You know, whatever it is the metal is that I've happened to choose, okay? All right, so let's move on to another question. What is the specific heat of silicon if it takes 192 joules of energy to raise the temperature of 45 grams of silicon by six degrees Celsius? Go. All right, did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. And the first thing that I hope that you were able to do was kind of come up with the equation. So remember that you have Q is equal to M times C sub S delta T. And so really all you have to do is rearrange this so that you can get it equal to C sub S or your specific heat. So basically what you can see is that it's a heat component divided by a mass component divided by a temperature component. So really all you have to do is pluck those pieces of information out of this problem. So your heat, we're saying that it takes 190 two joules of energy. Your mass of silicon was 45.0 grams. And then the temperature was, or the change in temperature was six degrees Celsius. So if you plug that all in, you're able to determine your specific heat has a value of 0 0.711 joules per gram degree Celsius for silicon. Okay. So hopefully you're able to do this. Just don't get stuck in the fact that it's always Q is equal to M C sub S delta T. Sometimes we're going to make you solve for different things. Make sure you can rearrange that equation. Okay. All right. One more question. And so this one, I have two parts that I'm hoping you can answer for me. So we have a calorimeter. I'm telling you it has a heat capacity of about 1200 joules per degree Celsius. We're going to do a reaction inside of the calorimeter that causes the temperature of the calorimeter itself. So we're talking the hardware. Okay. The calorimeter changes temperature from 22 to about 25 degrees Celsius. So we have two questions. How many joules of heat? So how much energy um, required this temperature change? And was this released or absorbed by the calorimeter? Okay, so your calorimeter is your system. Was the energy given to it or released by it? Okay, go. Did you get an answer? Hopefully you did. This was a little bit of a weirder problem because I've never worked through anything like this with you before, but hopefully since you've had a time to kind of think about it and let it marinate, you were able to work through it. So the first thing we need to do is identify the fact that we're looking for heat. Okay, we're trying to determine Q. And so the only other equation we have, because we can't do MC delta T because we don't have a mass, but we could do C cal times delta T. So the temperature of our calorimeter times the change in temperature. And so we have, excuse me, the specific heat of our calorimeter times the change in temperature. So now we know Q is equal to C cal. Well, that's just that 1265 term, 1265 joules per degree Celsius times our change in temperature. So we have 25.1 degrees Celsius minus 22.34 degrees Celsius. Well, now you're done. All you had to do is plug that in. You get a term for Q and you see that your answer is 3491.4. 0.4 joules of energy. Now it is positive. So right away you should say, okay, this is definitely absorbed, which makes sense, right? You've got something here. You put a reaction in there and it occurs. Okay. So the reaction goes off going releasing all of this energy, which is why the calorimeter has absorbed energy. The reaction has given off energy. The calorimeter absorbs it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I hope this stuff is really starting to click. If not, you need to take a second and just do some more calculations. Google, 
heat transfer problems and find whatever works. It's make sure it's a good quality worksheet if you're using that or if it's a good quality school that you're watching their videos. Okay, don't go to some like school you've never heard of that has kind of weird rules. Make sure you're following all these things. Okay, have a great week. Take care of yourself and drink water.